Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to GameStar TV. We are bringing you our final match of the day from the New Zealand Championship League, the Canterbury Regional Tournament. It's going to be Electric Sock Puppets versus Suddenly Citrix um, in this last match, which is effectively a quarterfinal match. Um, and the remainder of the matches uh, will be, be getting played tomorrow. So... Uh, should be a good one, and uh, we'll finish off with a bang. My name is Crisis. I'm joined once again in the studio by Mendrix. Hey, Mendrix, how's it going? Good, good, good. I got my coffee in hand. I'm ready to cast some games. Yeah, there's been some good games today as well. Yeah, they've been very um, evenly matched, especially that last game was a very top game. Pretty even along the whole way. Eventually, one team managed to pick up their advantage. They didn't drop it. Very well played by um, Electric Sock Pop. It's there. So we've actually been featuring electric sock puppets all, all day long. We could have called this uh, not the Canterbury Regionals, but uh, the story of electric sock puppets. Um, as we head into the third round, the third match that we're covering in the winner's bracket, uh, because it is a double elimination uh, tournament, um, and they are going up against Suddenly Citrus, and this could actually be a really tough match for them. Suddenly Citrix have Diamond and Challenger level players, and I was just having a look at the profiles of the electric sock puppets. And uh, most of them are Silver Division 3. So uh, they, they, they may be at a disadvantage in the laning phase, like they were, in fact, uh, in the previous, uh, previous game. Slight disadvantage in the laning phase. But maybe we will be able to see them turn on their team play together um, and uh, cause an upset victory here against Suddenly Citrix. Yeah, definitely a very tough match for the, um, tough match for them. This could be the end of their Cinderella story, you could say. But um, I'm definitely um, I'm going for Electric Sock Puppets at the moment. I always like a good underdog story. Um, at this moment in time, though, um, you can kind of see already that Sock Puppets are definitely respecting their team um, instead of you know going with what they had before, which was uh, they had very hyper carry ADCs. They've got the Caitlyn right now. She's a very safe pick. Basically, you can expect her to dominate the lane, irregardless of um, the skill level difference that um, you can see between the D Diamond and Challengers. She's just one of those champions that really um, help out with those disparities. Um, also, though, this time, though, it's going towards Suddenly Citrus's favor, where they have the Lucian. They seem to have a, a much stronger late game team at the moment, especially with the Morgana support. Although they're mid, um, I'm a bit surprised that they've got a Lissandra and a Syndra, so I'm expecting to see that Syndra head to the mid lane, Lissandra up in the top lane, so it looks like they're running a double AP combination at the moment. Well, let's uh, just very, very quickly run through suddenly Citrix's team because we haven't introduced them. Electric Sock Puppets has had a lot of camera time. So we'll have suddenly Citrix on the red side, and uh, represented by o Oven, Dirty Dan, Ballsack, Zizix, uh, or Zizik, and Elmo. So uh, they'll be going up against uh, the, the very well-known Canterbury team, <laughs> Electric Sock Puppets. Yeah, definitely in that regard. Consumer already casted it. Was it has been three, no, no, two of their games so far. We've casted two of their games. So um, you could say that um, suddenly Citrus are at a disadvantage in that regard. Yeah, a little bit so. So let's have a look at the bands. We've had Maokai uh, getting banned out again. Um, Electric uh, Sock Puppets have either either they have banned Maokai or their opponents have throughout the day. Um, they just don't want to have to deal with the tree. Uh, Jace, in reply, is probably the only n really notable ban from the Suddenly Citrus, um, and that is uh, that is definitely because Dairadi is a J specialist. Now, interestingly enough, Dairadi's picked up Anassis uh, going up against uh, Bullsack's Lysandra in the top lane. So, I, I don't know. They, they, uh, Anassis can become a monster um, and can it end up carrying a game through taking advantage of a single mistake in the late game. But it's going to be a wonder. I, I, I don't know whether the Anassis is even going to be able to get started against uh, Lysandra. He's definitely at a massive disadvantage, seeing as Bolsack has the range on him as well. So that's one of the big things. I'd say um, Bolsack is definitely going to sit there, tr try to zone out Nasus as much as possible, and probably succeed in the process. Not to mention, um, Bolsack's teleport ganks are much stronger than Nasus's. Basically, she can come in, use her Q, basically claw her way straight into the fight, and basically have lock someone down instantly. Whereas with Nasus, Nasus has the disadvantage of needing to get in range. He may have a slow, but the thing is, the difference is Lissandra can be right in there in the mix of things. And at the end of the day, you need this Nasus to get big and to get Q stacks, and I'm pretty sure Lissandra is going to stop her in that regard. 
So just having a look at their runes and uh, Susan has got flat magic resist and armor and then the rest into um, his AD. Now the Lysandra has got hybrid uh, penetration uh, in the quince, I think it would be, yeah, uh, uh, no, 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 hybrid That'd be the marks, the marks. Uh, that, that is, um, and then ability power, um, together with a little bit of magic resist, um, and flat yellows, uh, armor yellows, so looking to, um, use that ranged, uh, auto attack harass, I guess, uh, using the hybrid pen instead of just, uh, uh, straight. You actually gain a bit more from the, um, split pen marks right now, a lot of, uh, AP champions, unless they're purely, you know, cast, Everything's cast. We don't really want to auto attack that much. We're just rolling with it anyway because it just gives them that little bit of extra um, help when it comes to CSing, and it gives you a little bit of extra damage when they're auto attack harass. Okay, so in terms of the mid lane matchup, we've got Jittle Eight uh, on the Oriana. We know that he can play the Oriana well. Uh, dominated in his first game against a Kennen, but uh, going up against Dirty Dan, <coughs> who is a Syndra, uh, that's going to be a little bit of a different story uh, because I, I would say mainly because uh, Dirty Dan's going to be able to call up his stun at will instead of having to proc uh, those marks three times before you get a stun. Pretty much. Syndra is um, known for always winning her lane when you play her. Um, she's got extreme burst damage added to the fact that she's got the ignite on top of that. Look for Daddy Dan to definitely try and get some kills level 6, probably even level 2, level 3, because Syndra has the capability to do that. Um, or Considering Orianna's um, early game skirmishing has also been nerfed, um, Basically, Jittle 8 will be at a disadvantage there. So basically, you're probably looking to see um, Dirty Dan try to dominate his lane, push up early he can, and then start roaming and um, get some ass assassination kills with his ultimate and stun follow-ups. Now, if we take a look at the jungles as well, in the previous game, uh, Pava Lovanov played the Elise, but had very little to do in the early game. Uh, no, no real ganks. Uh, a little bit of counter ganking, I suppose, but really it was showing the face in the lane and then uh, disappearing. But came into his own uh, in the team fight stage and, and was was a, a great pick against the initiation of of Aramis. Now he's going to be going up against a Javan Four, and we've seen both of these champions getting a lot of play in the LCS. Javan Four, uh, really good early gank potential, just the same way as Elise. Pretty much, yeah. They're um pretty much when it comes to early game, both those junglers are pretty similar. Uh, obviously not in abilities, but with a ganking potential. Uh, I'd have to say J4 is a bit easier to gank with. Basically, once you um once you get in there, you have that big range for your EQ combination with the flag and the pulse strike. I guess you could say. I can't remember what the name is off the top of my head. But um as for um Elise, in considering they nerfed her repel range and they've nerfed the width of her cocoon shot. The point blank cocoons are a lot harder to, to do right now. So I would definitely give the early game advantage to J4 in that regard, especially considering J4 also has a better, considered to be a better mechanical, mechanically skilled player behind him. So we want to announce a winner of the skin battle, but unfortunately we're not able to because Zizek has not connected just yet. So he's we'll he's, he's playing Lucian. I think Lucian's only got what, two skins. Um, Three, maybe three. Yeah, he's got uh, the football. Uh, uh, the football. Oh, he's the football skin. If he's got the football skin, he wins. That's my. That's how I'm going to take that. That's well, like that. they they'd have three versus three, so we'd have to give an advantage there. Just want to call out Sheriff Caitlin's uh, skin. I don't know why anybody would wear a swimming costume. That should be hot pants. Well, you know what? Just Caitlin, a bit of fashion advice uh, out there for you girls. Caitlin's uh, never in in range <laughs> for anyone to really have a good look at her anyway, so it's it's, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> but cupcakes. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, Sizzix Cis Cis hasn't connected yet, so we can expect to see a pause coming up probably when we once we enter the game, maybe, or we might get enter in and he's already back in the game. So hopefully that's the case for us in that regard. All right. Well, while we're just waiting for the players to load in, whoops, uh, that's not what I wanted to show you. That's what I wanted to show you. So just uh, announcing or, or advertising the Timo event that's happening at the Armageddon Cafe. Uh, in Addington here in Christchurch for the Summoners of Canterbury. So it's next week, the 23rd of August, starting at 7 p.m. Um, it's organized by Karen, who is also the admin for um, 
for this tournament. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be there just briefly. I'm, I've got a, a, I'm going to the film festival that evening as well. So I'm going to pop in and probably won't be able to have dinner with you guys. But it'll be really good. Come on down. There'll probably be some uh, games to play um, at the LAN event. Some surprise prizes of um, RP and other goodies on the day, says Karen. And uh, they, well, heading off for dinner as well. So it should be good fun. Um, Armageddon Cafe is somewhere, I think it's on Lincoln Road um, in Addington. So head on over there. And into the game. There you go. Into a pause. And into a pause. Yeah, so as you can see, you know, straight into the pause, probably just waiting for Zizik to connect. This is one of the good things about, you know, it not being solo queue. One of the things I hate the most is when someone's disconnects and you're like, come on guys, get get back in the game, back in the game. You know, you're just stressing out, but it's all good this time. You can pause it. I think they've got 15 minutes on both sides, isn't it? Or is it 10 minutes both sides and then a little bit in between for some a little bit of room. I haven't really read up on the rules that much for I mean, these sort of situations. I think this is a pretty friendly tournament as it is. So, you know, it's not it's not like uh, teams are going to be demanding their advantages of a four versus five or demanding yeah, exactly. a forfeit or anything like that. So, um, so just just in terms of what the result of this tournament is going to be, whoever wins the tournament um, gets put forward as the Canterbury representative for the New Zealand Championship. So they'll go up against um, other representatives from regions like Auckland, um, Hamilton, uh, which I, I guess would be classed as Waikato, um, and various other regions, none of whom uh, really matter because, as I, I mean, GameStar is completely non-partisan. We don't care who wins, but I live in Canterbury, um, and so I'm quite keen for whoever wins this tournament to actually win the New Zealand tournament as well. <laughs> well, definitely, I regard, well, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm still going for Electric Sock Puppets purely because of the underdogs in this situation. But, um, I mean, obviously we'd want to see them go through and uh, definitely take it out. I mean, I, I, I may be an Australian, but I'm all for whoever, you know, may the best man win in that situation. And it looks like the play has been resumed. Oh, fantastic. So everybody's in the team. Oh, hey, let's have a look. Uh, w what's the skin that, um, who were we missing? Zizek. Yeah, Zizik. So he oh, is using skin. a normal. He is using a standard skin. So yeah. it looks like the sock puppets win this game. Oh, so first advantage to the sock puppets. Huzzah. It's all about the skin. Skin means skills, guys. Okay. You don't have a skin. You're not playing your champion, right? Well, the thing is, is you don't actually buy the skin until you own with the champion. Exactly. That's so, exactly. So, so it's like a signal to everyone out there. You've got the skin. It means. Irregardless if you're playing a four versus five and you destroy them, like nah, man, you 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 own that game. You get the skin, okay, guys. <laughs> Support Riot. <laughs> oh man, I I I saw some, a stat once, and I'm pretty certain that on average, uh, the minimum people spend on this game, even though it's free to play, is like sixty dollars. Sixty. Really? Wow. Pieces. Yeah. I know some. I, I've got a couple friends that I know. I know one guy spent at least two grand, and another guy that spent what? another like three grand. Yeah. It's How do you intense. do that? I don't know. Name changes. They, he literally owns every skin for every champion. Um, oh, people just like collecting things. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, you do realize, like, as much as I want the Le Legends to continue on to the future, there will be something with new technology, new thing that will just blow us off our feet and we'll take control. Like, it's just the general life cycle of things. But hopefully League of Legends is here to play, and it's, I'm hoping it's going to be one of those things where it's like soccer or, you know, all, all the other normal sports out there. So... Fingers crossed for that to happen. But. So your investment uh, continues on into the future. <laughs> like, you know, I just like the game. Like, I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah. Oh, no, it's fantastic. I, I do believe that... Um, the There's strategy... an evade happening in the top lane right now. Oh, Looks yeah, like yeah, yeah. He's in a bit oh. of trouble. I'm going to see if he can get that cocoon off. He's just juking back and forth. Looks like the attack is in on. A nice Q onto ball sack right now. Just forcing him out of lane. This is probably a good time to force him out as well. So he's going to probably have to back off and use his teleport so he's got full HP when he gets back into the lane. So early advantage for the electric shock, puppet, um, shock puppets there. And it looks like they're stealing the um, the red as well, but both sides are stealing red, so it's not, not that bad of an issue. And good work there, Dairati, picking up a, uh, a Q on the um, on the little... The little uh, what is it? What is it? What is a small camp? Oh, we'll just call it. Uh, camp. the right. Well, no, no, the lizards. The little lizards. lizards. The little lizards. There you go. Picks up a Q, and he took that uh, to <laughs> say, uh, "That's my payment for driving them away from you, Pavlovinov." Uh, all about the stacks, guys. All about the stacks. Yes. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on Dairadi's uh, stacks uh, as an assist. And there you go. He's already got what? 12. 12, 12 damage. 12. So yeah, like, man. Four stacks. It's three per. Hey. 
Exactly, yeah, three yeah. per hit. Or, or maybe it's four, let's just check. Is it? It is... Three. Three. Yeah, three per So, um... So, Abin, as the... Um, as the J4, um, immediately responded to that invade on the red um, and took the uh, took his opponent's red in turn. So uh, has cleared that out, and I think he's now going to circle down to the mid lane uh, and try and get a gank down onto the Oriana. So we'll follow him. Yeah. So basically, as you can see, um, because Dirty Dan has the ignite, you want to take advantage of the fact that he's got the lane. Nice stun onto it. Straight the EQ ignite, uh, and as you what can a see, combo. there. They're already showing their, um, you know, their ability to coordinate, and as you know, diamond, diamond players, just showing their advantages and what they're capable of, and really taking advantage of the fact that Dirty Dan has ignite. And right now, they see they forced the lane out right there. It looks like Pav is going to go go through, clean up as much experience, free experience as he can. But Dirty Dan's going to come through, pick up his advantage, come to lane already with a Chalice of Harmony, so he's going to have a massive advantage in this mid lane already. Crazy. Meanwhile, in the top lane, a Dairadi, uh pushes his lane up and uh, is uh, stacking his Q. He's got 10 stacks already, which is nice. Balsack uh, putting the Ras down onto him, but uh, Dairadi starting up with a flask and pots. So he's uh, looking to just uh, stick around in lane um, and uh, pop, pop those pots as much as possible. Uh, nice little uh, harass going down onto Preachy. Um, Koya, in fact, has taken a bit of harass as well. So Zizek as the Lucian, uh, just making sure that he keeps dropping his... Uh, uh, what is it? Is, is it a piecing light? Yeah, it's piecing light is his Q. Yeah, yeah, he's Zizik is very good. I've seen him play uh, myself, and my God, half the time he's made me cry when he plays well. Oh, uh. the top lane. Sorry, uh, let's hit the backspace. Uh, head on up to the top lane. Dairadi, uh is going to get ganked now. In comes uh, Abin, um, and uh, well, he gets the fox on. He hasn't used his flag and drag yet, so uh, there's really no nothing need that to. He can do. Yeah, Volsack uh, gets Just simply walk up to him. Wait, yep. is, are you going to blow the flash? Oh, no, okay, I'm going to start whacking away at you, buddy. All right, so that is 2 and 0 oh before the five minute mark. Already a thousand gold lead uh, in favor of the uh, Southern Citrus. Um, little 8 is getting bullied all the way down to his, uh, his turret. Um, in comes a little, oh, uh, the, the cocoon from oh, uh, Pavel Ovenov was just out of range. Um, I still think Dirty would have been okay there because he had um, Oven as backup in that situation. But um, basically, yeah, you know, just as you can see, he's just hanging to one side of the lane. That's one of the things you want to do. Generally, you can just ward one side of the lane to see if there's a, um, a, and you stick to that side. So when you do see a gank coming through, so as you can see, she's just warded there. So she'll generally stick to that side that she's warded. If she sees a least coming through, she'll back away. If she decides to come through from the other side of the uh, lane, she'll just walk through lane through, go the opposite way that they're coming. So it's just general little tactics that these guys like to use. All so right. basically coming through into the, you know, uh, right now it's just back to calm down. J4's gone back now. He's just going to pick up some, um, pick up his next items. Looks like he's going very um, aggressive, going straight for this um, Elder Lizard. He's already picked up two long swords. Um, he hasn't really got uh, as much farm, I believe. Oh no, he still, he does. He's got 21. So you basically he's really showing a big advantage and definitely, um, showing that he is the battle jungler over Pav right now. Well, even after that gank up in the top lane, Nasus, or Susan, uh, played by Dairati, uh, has, he's getting on, what, it's, it's almost double. He's got 15 CS on his land opponent, so he absolutely doesn't care about what's going on. In the bottom lane, we've got uh, Koya has been darkbound and exhausted as uh, yet another gank comes in from the J4. He manages to get away thanks to the peel of Preachy, who we know plays a very good Alistar. He's um, a very proficient cow. Yeah, so Koya getting away well very well there and that means um, that uh, J4 doesn't have a looks like J Little is just getting blown up now Dirty Dan gets his ultimate straight away picks up his 6 and then just takes him out straight away yeah, managed it looks to like switch Pav's there to just the time as well so are, we, yeah. are you on 6, 48, 49, 50? yes yes yeah, I am fantastic ok cool that's where I am as well do you want to go to live right now? Or no 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 it's all good we'll, we'll just stick it at 15 seconds that sounds good to me so J4 going in gets a little bit of a, an invade going on takes the blue wraith away from Pav Lovanov, um, and with the support of his Syndra, that was great support from the Syndra, comes down and just makes sure that uh, even if Elise was thinking about engaging onto the J4, uh, the stun was available um, and, and zoning out. Even in that situation, J4 has stuff, and as you can see, a dark binding going down to the Koya right there. Looks like Sizik was thinking about going in there, but Preachy was there to 
um, drop off, Fab throwing out a cocoon shot, just saying, look guys, I'm here, don't try anything cheeky. But right now, looks like Oven is there to take on the red buff oh, right now. Looks dead, like Fab is in spider. trouble right now. Nice dead. stun away, flash through, wow, and Cataclysm is more than enough just to take him out. Yeah, he flashed across the wall, but unfortunately, the Cataclysm kind of went over the wall as well, so... Uh, unfortunately unable to get away there. So, look, this is the thing. Suddenly Citrus have the timer on that red, and they are taking advantage of the timer. So, um, that's, I guess that's a clear difference between these two junglers. Um, even though the, uh, the electric sock puppets would have had the timer on the red, um, they are not uh, taking advantage of that uh, information. Well, basically that point in time, um, Pavel was a bit concerned about what was going on in the bottom lane and wanted to try and help out. Obviously, Suddenly Citrus took advantage of the fact that they had the time and they knew that she would probably be heading down to that um, red buff there So why not pick it up and kill her at the same time? It just you know seems like an intelligent move at that point in time and These are the differences that you can see the subtle differences that you see between the diamonds and between the golds and the silvers There is a difference there is a reason why these guys are in in diamond guys You need to you know give them a little bit more of um, the benefit of the doubt It is not just the troll teams trust me when I say this They take advantage of every little situation that they can think of Okay, so heading to the nine minute mark, we've got uh, just over a 2,000, so 2.5 thousand gold lead in favor of Suddenly Citrus. They've got four kills in reply to, uh, well, zero for the, um, the electric sock puppets. And really the only lane that is actually doing well uh, is the top lane. Um, and even that, Nasus is slowly losing his advantage. Um, he's not that far ahead in terms of his CS lead anymore. Lissandra clawing it back um, after the gank. Pretty much, yeah. Basically, um, she's slowly getting more ability power and she's going to start being able to hit uh, Dirty pretty hard. He's actually building very intelligently and um, he's gone into the Kindle Gen into the Negatron Cloak, so I expect to see him pick up a Spirit Visage soon just to be able to sustain a lot harder. Um, he's playing this intelligently, but I don't know if it'll be enough you seen in the rest of the, you know, the rest of his team just hemorrhaging a little bit. As we can see, Zizik has gone a little bit deep. preachy has gone through to try and um, turn him away. His ultimate's been blown. As we can see, Pavlov's trying to get through, but Oven's there to um, come through with, with the pill from Elmo, blocking the ace in the hole from the Kaelin. Nice flash away. Ultimate back onto Koya right there. Preachy's also in trouble. A double kill for Oven right there, and Zizik picks up the cow. So he's just a getting some beef and looks look at this straight away after they pick up the advantage in the bottom lane going straight for that dragon wow and a quick shout out to everybody in canterbury just as that cataclysm came down we had a little bit of an aftershock down here so miniature earthquake uh in the canterbury region uh, just to remind us that j4 is a power uh in this game and we're going to get another kill J jittle 8 has gotten himself caught out uh is Lady dan's uh Yes, his uh, ulti is available, and pops it down, the leg goes down, getting forced there by the stun. It is now 8 and 0 oh in favor of the Suddenly Citrus. Stun Another on the stun power there. Oh, Pavel Ovenhoff is going to go down. In fact, that second, um, is that an ulti from Volsack? That was an ulti from Volsack yeah. as well, yeah. Just, just, you know what, it's all about that kill secure. The kill secure, guys. <laughs> Probably not necessary at this stage. <laughs> not necessary, but you know what, it might as well make sure that that... Because basically, making sure that at least goes down means they get a free turret. As you can see, they're just going to start backing away nice and slowly. Dirty Dan's more than enough to finish up that tower. Yeah, Dirty Dan uh, pushing forwards. Uh, wants to press the advantage, clear another wave uh, before he decides to go back. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Jittle 8, uh, brave as anything, decides he wants to go in for it, but he's got no support. And unfortunately, the poke in reply, or the, the disengage poke, let's call it, um, onto, uh, onto Jittle 8, uh, too much to, well, enough to discourage him from uh, trying to continue the tune. Meanwhile, down at the bottom lane, Koya and Preachy, they're still not scared. Um, and fair enough, I suppose. Uh, they've got uh, good peel from Preachy, pushing up their lane at the moment. They just don't have great vision. And I do see a J4 coming down the river um, and looking pretty, pretty dangerous um, as he comes down. Yeah, as this is happening up, up in the top lane, so is Pavel heading up there. So, of course, these guys choose the exact same time to go for ganks right now. Um, Doridi's very low right now, taking a lot of damage from Volsack. As we can see, Pavel is trying to get through, but he's easily able to... Um, Come through, uses his Q to get through a little bit too aggressive, trying to pick up Doridi right there. Might be in trouble right now. The Repel comes through, not enough. Really good damage, nice 
dodge to the side to dodge the cocoon, and looks like he's wow. going to get away, flashes out. As we go down to the bottom lane, looks like there's just a bit of pressure happening there. j is coming through right now, Oven's getting ready, has he's got his ultimate available, yes he does, he's going right in for it, into it, come through, there comes the ulti from Morgana as well, nice damage coming down onto Koya. It looks like the tower's gone onto Zizik and he's not allowed to keep chasing through. Oven coming out straight away. Good um, damage juggling there from the tower and looks like they're not going to get much from this. But Morgana does have full HP right now and she might be willing to go through. Nice blinding in. Nice damage there. Maybe a bit too much. Perfectly just escaping from that oh, tower right so there. so close. I mean, we're watching the the mid, uh, sorry the bottom lane. Um, unfortunately, the rampage uh, going down. Jittle 8 really is uh, providing uh, most of the fuel for that. Um, so we missed we missed it down there. But the ready's about to be taken out right now. Perfect ultimate onto the tower at that point in time. There is just action happening everywhere and looks like suddenly Citrus is really taking control of this entire game. Yeah, eleven and zero, and uh, the second turret now of the game going to them. So two and zero in turrets, and Zizek uh, pressing the lane, pushing the lane up, and uh, are smacking. Um, smacking the, the well, she he's smacking the turret, and of course there goes an all chat from Ballsack. The, the call um, of EQ EQ. That was exactly what it was. A quick little earthquake. There you go. Exactly the EQ. <laughs> I'm guessing a 3.4. Wasn't well, a huge um, one. It pretty much. It looks like we've got already teleporting in to make sure that that tower doesn't go down. Guess the cannon minion. Guess the cannon minion. That's what matters. It looks like they're stealing away the blue buff. They're in perfect position right now to actually um, take these guys out as soon as they get through. Looks like she picks up the blue buff. Nice flash cocoon onto Dirty Dan there right now, but they're in blue trouble. Nice oh, lovely shot delivery going through, ball. and they managed to get the shutdown, but the ultimate from Sindri still manages to go off and finishes off Pavlov there. So nice trade back there. Man, that was a great uh, delivery of the ball to the lapel. Uh, yeah, from definitely. From Ariana. Uh, together with Pavlov. So great, great little move there. Picks up their first kill of the game. Um, Looks like J4 is trying to try his luck here on the Nasus right now. As he uses EQ, there it goes there. The ultimate has been blown. Looks like it's going to be a Q into the W via the Bolsack. And there you go. Pretty much cleaning up. Nice easy kill there by the two of them. Looks like that's going to free them up to take this tower. Going back into the bottom lane right now. Looks like Oriana is trying to make her way through there. Looks like that top lane will definitely be getting that tower out there using the um, standard to give them a little bit of attack damage first. But it looks like nothing is really going to happen in the bottom lane. So we've got three towers that have been taken down. We're heading to the 15 minute mark. The gold lead at the moment is in the 8,500 gold range, just as Baron spawns. So I don't think we'll see a, 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 two, a particularly early uh, Baz Kebab. But I think, yeah, we should have a dragon in about a minute's time. And. Um, Oh, look at that damage from Syndra. Just all she oh. needed to do was just land her stun and ult, and she just dropped straight away. Jiddle Eight's coming through. He has a full, what is it? He had a full level advantage on that Syndra right there. And it looks like down on the bottom lane, Koya and Preacher are in trouble. The ultimate coming through. Nice dark binding by walking past Preachy there. Takes easily takes picks up the kill on the cow. Flashes forward, and now is just nice quick. Piercing light into his passive shots to take out the Caitlyn there. Yeah, so great. really just dominating right now. Yeah, great use there of um, the Frost Queen's claim there to get a slowdown on both of the champions as well. So great work over there. Zizek and uh, Elmo will now press on Diddle to... Diddle Ace in trouble right now. Oh, oh, oh. Nice shockwave onto Dirty Dan while still not enough. All he needed to do was just throw down another attack and he was sweet. Oh, Mystical D, shout out to you in the Twitch chat. Yep. Um, this is a little bit of a pounding that's going down at the moment from the uh, the Sudden Citrus uh, team. Yeah, they've been really basically making taking control of this game right now. 117. They're basically going to need a bit of a miracle to come back from the... Well, not really a bit of a miracle. They're going to need an actual miracle at this point in time. Because there is over a 10k gold lead right now. And look at them already ready to go in and get that dragon. So Dairati uh, right now is um, kind of the only hope. Uh, he's on 129 CS, so dead even just about with his uh, his opponent. He's got two. Teleport coming in from the Sandra right now. Looks like they want to do something, but guess the rest of the team didn't get the um, the memo. But looks like they're still trying to get through that dark binding. Almost got Koya. Looks like the EQ did pick up that. A nice entomb onto Koya. Not much you can do there. Volsark picking up that kill there. Looks like we got a culling coming through from Zizik onto that the cow. The cow, so much tankiness he's done throughout this entire game right now. Not enough. Looks like 
At least she's trying to try her luck to try and get Elmo, but there's too many players around her protecting Morgana from that, and looks like she was sealed by Yeah, the looking rest for of her a team. consolation kill, really, out of all of that, trying to take on the support. But man, the support's uh, fairly tanky already. Uh, used the Frost Queen's claim uh, again in that fight, has a bit of HP, and really just a kit that uh, is a has a lot of survivability, I suppose, um, in terms of just, uh, just kiting. Kite potential and lifesteal. Yeah, pretty much in that regard. Um, Sidious has got nine kills at the moment. She's the only person on their team to have given up a kill. I think we should report Dirty Dan right now. Yeah, I think. Peter. He's letting down the team. As <laughs> you can see, they're going a little bit too far there. There's not much left on that um on that tower there. Nice stun. Wow, taking out half HP on both of them from that stun. That was a good shockwave onto Dirty Dan. Nice pick up there. Look, God damn it, Dirty Dan. Stop feeding. God. <laughs> This is just too much right now, as Nasus picks up the top turret, so it looks like they're getting some consolation gold back to try it out. The damage from Balsack is disgusting, taking Pablo down to a quarter. I appreciate she's thinking, trying to luck to get in there. Looks like the Binding lands nice. Tormented Cell underneath her, he pops his ulti to escape, with J4 coming down to try and see if he can make anything happen, but it looks like he's a bit late to the party, everyone's leaving and getting the hell out of there. Well, we have one turret that's uh, gone in reply to the four that suddenly Citrus have taken down. The goal deficit is in the, th the range of 13,000. Uh, the push now from suddenly Citrus... What a binding on the bear. Yeah. Look at that, just instant exhaust. I don't even think the exhaust was needed there after the entomb, to be honest. And, uh, so just and get her through the E. Yeah, pretty or much uh, chained, uh, chained down for a good five seconds there, and uh, eating up the damage uh, right after the turret goes down. So poor old Koya, um, getting smacked down by it was the Morgana and the Lysandra. So uh, things are not looking good at the moment, Mendrix. Yeah, things are definitely well, things are definitely looking good for suddenly Citrus at the moment. But things for Sock Puppets looks like their Cinderella story is coming to an end. Did you see that? Did he get the? Yeah, he did get it. That was a nice flash by Pab. They've been extremely cheeky. Oven is enraged. Culling coming down through after the Cataclysm. There's not much Pab can do, and looks like Volsack decides to pick up the blue buff that he believes was his. Um, Oven's in a bit of trouble, gets the shutdown by Doretti right now. Sizzix just right there, making sure he picks up some damage. Nice stun lock up by there. There's a bit of a miss on the shockwave right there, but looks like the tower is going to be the MVP and then helping to get the shutdown for Koya in that regard. Bolasak is on the run right now, trying to escape the cow and the wrath of the Caitlyn. Meanwhile, bottom lane. We've in the got bottom uh, lane, two just players, like... two champions. So that was a five versus three in the top lane there. Um, that managed to result in those three kills getting picked up. Oh, sorry, the two kills getting picked up by the uh, sock puppets. Um, and meanwhile, Dirty Dan and Elbow down at the bottom lane, uh, getting a combo down onto Pavlovanov. Is that some mental cell going to be enough? Oh my god, nice repel at the last second just vibe. But never mind, Dirty Dan's like, nah, not getting away. That's the best thing about Syndra. She's really good at denying random things. Wow, Elmo's dark findings are really on point today. Pretty much, he, I don't think he's missed. Maybe, maybe because I've missed a few of all of, of the um, early game. Pretty much every time I've seen him, he's making those hits. So Koya, just uh, putting a disclaimer out there in the all chat. Uh, Koya, we've been watching you guys all game, all, all day today, and you've been playing really well. So uh, I wouldn't take this game as a representation of how bad you are um, at, at all. Nobody's thinking that. I don't think. Dirty Dan's been a bit cheeky there, trying to see if he can see Koya come up so she can get someone. He's just dropping some balls on the ground right now, so that all he needs to do is get a stun and just knock her away. But it looks like they're being extremely careful and just walking away right oh, now. Oh, Lissandra, Ballsack, you're taking a lot of damage um, and is walking away with the Wither. A nice hit, Duke there. Uh, manages to get past the Cocoon, gets the Zonya out, and unfortunately still goes down. Beautiful bunch of shutdown goals going on to the Elise, but Zizix is there and picks up the double kill. Uh, takes down uh, both uh, Dairati, um and um, and Pavarova, pa Pavarovanova. Yeah, at this point in the game, I suddenly is just playing. They're not. They're not. They're just playing. They're toying with their food right now. It's like the it's like the cat dangling with the mouse, just sitting there. They could have easily just taken a Baron at this point and ended the game, or group for that matter. Looks like they decided that enough enough playing around. We're going to come through and siege this and take out the tower. Zizix is just so strong at the moment, 180 CS to 147, he's got 6-1 six, six on top of that. And not to mention all of the um, gold there. Fantastic teleport there just to tank the extra little bit of damage on that minion in that regard. Nice stun taking out half the HP, looks like there's a bit of craziness happening. Ballsack going pretty low right now, everyone's onto Dirty Dan. 
As you can see, Bolsax low will Bolsax fall. They managed to take out Lucian right now. Doretti is really trying to get the kills, but Bolsax just kiting away, and Doretti picks it up. And there's a triple kill picked up by the Syndra. Nice and easy end there to them. Looks like they're going to be able to pick up this middle and inhibitor turret and also take it out. Looks like they just flashed there as well. Looks like the Surrender's gone through. Yeah, they're just trying to make it time for the Nexus. From the, uh, the electric shock, uh, the electric sock puppets who kind of got schooled there. I, I, I mean, they, they, they didn't Showing do, them why they're diamond, pretty much. I, they didn't do badly in the lane. I mean, this is the thing. You know, if you look at, if you look at CS, uh, excepting for the middle lane. So Dirty Dan absolutely dominated his lane. Uh, but the bottom lane didn't actually do so badly. Uh, what are we at? 183 to 147. So 40 CS behind. Uh, I mean, it's it, it's it's significantly worse, but it's it's not. They, they seem to be holding their own a lot of the time. But unfortunately, uh, that Javan was just an absolute monster. Yeah, he, he was everywhere. Definitely MVP for the match. As much as um, Dirty Dan did well, he was 13 2 so I'm sorry, man. You fed two times. You cannot get MVP. <laughs> so this is going to go to... Actually, you know what? MVP should go to Morgana. She didn't die at all. The rest of her team are feeders. Yeah, 0 one uh, from Elmo the Morgana. Javan 4. Uh, Ovens Javan 4 with 10, 1, and 12. So a fantastic showing. Uh, in the end, uh, the team is just too strong from suddenly Citrus going up against the um, uh, against Electric Sock Puppets. And uh, that's pretty much murder she wrote, I guess. Pretty much, exactly. The Cinderella story is over. Well, uh, it's not all over completely, ladies and gentlemen. It's over They've been knocked the down to the... Yeah, they've, they've been knocked down, that's right. Yeah, so they're into the, uh, into the loser's bracket. Uh, we're going to be ending the broadcast and, in fact, the competition for today. Tomorrow, it's going to... We'll be starting at 11 a.m. New Zealand time. That is 9 a.m. Uh, Australian time. And we will be bringing you the semifinals, both of the semifinals, in fact, and the grand final of the Canterbury Regional qualifying tournament for the New Zealand Championship League. Well, Mendrix, any last words before we sign off? Get out there, have fun in solo queue, guys, and join us again tomorrow for some good fun. All right, fantastic. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, tune in tomorrow again, same channel, twitch.tv forward slash GameStar TV 2 for more League of Legends action tomorrow, starting from 11 a.m. New Zealand time. This is Crisis. And Mendrix, signing out.